In the last video, I left off with this example and then nullable here. And in this video, I want to dissect what's going on here a little bit. Uh, first of all, let's run this. 5 plus 6 is 11. I've already said that nullable int, when you write int question mark, the compiler replaces it with nullable int. And when you write char question mark, char is another value type, the compiler will simply replace it with nullable char. So let's examine what this nullable class is. And I think the best way to do that is by writing our own nullable. Uh, the compiler gives nullable special treatment, so it won't give our version of nullable special treatment. But still, we can do the special treatment ourselves and learn here. So I'm actually going to go to my Solution Explorer, right click, add new item, and let's call this J nullable, and you're probably thinking, Jamie, you never ever make extra files. Why are you, are you doing it in this case? Well, so I can right click on this and say new vertical tab group, have it on the right, and then over here we can use it and test it, while at the same time you can see the implementation. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit in this window too. Turn your uh, options up to 720 or high definition. Uh, you can do that with my videos on YouTube. Okay, well, let's get started. First of all, let's get rid of the namespace. All right, we don't need that unless we're doing production stuff, which we're not. Uh, looks like we need, let's see, first of all, we need a constructor that stores the value. So let's, let's give ourselves a constructor. And we also need to make this generic. Okay, there's a generic. And again, review the uh, first couple videos in the generics playlist if necessary where t is a struct, and this also is not a class, it's a struct. And I really wish they would have allowed us to say val type instead of struct. They got the struct from C++, and what's even worse is when they said struct, they defined the semantics or the meaning to be completely different from C++. In C++, when you say struct, it simply defaults the visibility of everything to public. But anyway... There we go. So we have our constructor here. We need to take a value. So we'll say t value. And we need to store this value away. So let's do t value like so. And then down here, I'm going to say this dot value gets value. And I know in the constructor here, they have to pass a t. Okay. And I know that t is a struct. All right. It's not a nullable struct, it is a value. Okay, it's not this. All right, it is literally this. I have a value. Okay, they cannot pass null to this constructor. So then I'm going to say, hey, uh, has value, which I haven't put in yet, it gets true. Let's actually put that in here. Bool has value. And, and what's kind of interesting about this has value thing, this bool has value, is this is how nullable adds that extra null value to the range of the type that we are storing. Okay, I know that that's enough. What, Jamie? <laughs> Let me show you. When I say int question mark, I gets five. Well, if I say int, you know, int whatever gets something, right? Int the the type int means I can store values from int dot min value to int dot max value. Okay, that is the domain of the int type. Ooh, there's another technical term, domain. But basically, I can go int uh, negative whatever int dot min value is to int or negative int value, min value plus one plus one plus one all the way up to int dot max value. So simply by adding this question mark on here, say, it says you can have one more value, and that is null. And we will do some hocus pocus magic for you. Well, the magic is we'll have this boolean here. And if it's true, that means, hey, it's a legitimate value. But if it's false, then you're null. All right, And whatever this is has no meaning because we are null. There's no value. We all right. So that's how we get that extra value. We wrap everything up in the struct. We store the value if there is one. If there's not, we indicate it with this boolean here. Okay. So well, let, let's see if we can actually 
use one of these. We have int i gets five. Let's let's try to do int. Now I can't say int question mark, and I have to say j nullable int j Jamie i. How about that, Jamie i? So here's here's this i, and we're going to make a Jamie i. Let's say it gets five like that. Well, can you think what's going to happen if I try to build this? I mean, there's a hint here. I already have a squiggly right there in front of you. If I try to build this, what error is going to show up? Pause the video. Think about it. Think about it. Control Shift B. Cannot implicitly convert. Type int to J null. I don't know what you're doing, but it's kind of like you hypocrite compiler. You 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 convert this six to a null will just fine. What's so special about that that you're not doing for me? Well, it, again, the compiler considers nullable to be special. And what it does is when it sees you try to assign a value of the type that you're trying to be nullable, it comes in here and says, oh, okay, I'll just um, call the constructor for you like this. All right, hopefully. Oh, now I'm going off the screen. Let me put that on there. But literally, the compiler just replaces this with new one of these. We can do it ourselves. Here we go, watch. New one of those. Pass the value into the constructor. Control Shift B just to prove that everything works. And I should probably say new, huh? Control Shift B. Build succeeded. Very good. So there you go. There's syntactic sugar part one uh, demystified. All right. I'm going to pull that back though. Okay. Well, what. Other things can we do with these nullables that we are not able to do with our nullable so far? Well, we can do the addition, but before we do the addition, I actually want to, you know, I want to say console write line Jamie I. Right? If I came down here and said uh, console write line I, we would expect the value 5 to print because that's the value that's stored in our I. So I would expect the 5 to print right here. So let's see what happens. Let me. I'm going to comment out this code for now. We're not quite using it quite yet. Control F5. We get five, and then we get J nullable system dot n32. Well, if you look at the reflection videos, this is the type name, and then or even the generic videos. I cover this. This is the type name, and this is what we're storing in the generic argument. This is useless. All right. I wanted to see five. So the way we're going to do that is the same way that they did it in here. We need to override two string, and it's really straightforward override to string tab and return value dot to string okay now watch watch control the five look at that look at that we have our two fives we're good we're good okay I'm actually going to let's get rid of this for now I just I want to take baby steps here okay I know I can say I gets null all right can I say Jamie I gets null? No, red squiggly. The compiler's like, hey, I, Jamie I is a value type. All right? You said it's a value type, and null is not a legitimate value to store in a value type. That is totally illegal. What are you trying to do? Well, it's legal here, all right? And isn't saying int question mark I the same as saying nullable I? Well, again, it's the compiler is treating nullable special. It's in the member of the compiler's VIP club. Um, so what the compiler does when you, it sees null, it literally just converts it to new j nullable int like so. And if you remember, new for a value type means zero out all the bits. It doesn't mean go create an instance out on the heap. It means zero out the bits in here. Okay, well, if I zero out the bits in there, hmm, hmm, that means value in the case of an int will be zero, but more importantly, has value will be false. And if it's false, that means that this is null, all right? What this represents is null, okay? Don't look at this because has value is false, meaning it's null, all right? There's, there is no value, so isn't that kind of weird? Or kind of, I don't know, clever, I think it's more clever. We knew this up, and by knowing it up, we set this Boolean to false, which means this thing is null. So that's probably enough for this video. In the next video we're going to continue picking apart this noble. I'm going to show you all the sugar and love that the compiler gives to this noble type. If hopefully, well obviously this is interesting to you because you're still watching the videos, but if it ever becomes non-interesting again, it will not be 
Um, it will not make the difference between whether you get a job or not. Well, maybe it would. Maybe maybe you'll come interview at a job with me and I'll ask you about this. No, <laughs> I don't ask about this. Generally, a question I always ask to, is, uh, what's the difference between a delegate and an, and an event? And obviously, I have videos up for that you can go watch.